Jones, is there an optimum chunky mount for dynamic making, or is it the bigger the better? It is not the bigger the better. So it really depends on what your goal is with what you're chunking towards. Um, if you watch, I go over this on one of my dynamic banking videos. Um, it's one of the specific examples. And I talk about the size of the chunk. But basically what we look at is what is the interest rate that you're paying on your line of credit? What is the interest rate on the debt that you're tackling? If the debt that you're tackling is higher than your line of credit, a big chunk that would pay it off or take out large chunks of it will make a whole lot of sense. One of the nice things about utilizing this dynamic banking method with a line of credit, though, is that we're leaving ourselves room in that line of credit in case there's an emergency that comes up. That way we can put all of our money to work, paying down the debt, and still have access to money if we need it. So we don't ever want to take out and spend all of our line of credit. We always want to have that cushion in there in case an emergency expense pops up. We're not going to get in trouble. So if the interest rate is higher on the debt that you're paying off, or if you're chunking it towards an investment and you have the opportunity to earn a lot more on the investment than what you're paying in interest, larger chunks can make sense. If it's a lower debt, if it's a lower interest debt that's lower interest than your line of credit, it still makes sense to do dynamic banking, only you most likely want to do a smaller chunk, something that you're going to offset most of that interest cost each month. That way, your overall interest cost is less than the interest that you're going to pay on the debt that you're paying off. Case in point. Let's say you have a 7% interest on your line of credit and you have a 10% car loan. Okay? Makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Use larger chunks in that line of credit. Knock out that 10%. And then when your income brings down that line of credit a little bit, not only are you paying 7% on that debt, but you're also offsetting it a bit each month. So your average might be 6%, right? Because you're not offsetting a lot of it. You're just offsetting a little bit because you took a huge chunk. If you're offsetting, let's say your car loan is a 4% car loan. Now you've got a 7% line of credit. You want to do a smaller chunk that almost matches your, your monthly income. If you do that, you take that smaller chunk. Now you're knocking out 4% on the car and your income comes in and it brings it down close to zero. So instead of 7%, you're gonna end up paying approximately 1%, right? Or 2%, something that's lower than that 4%. Like that's gonna be your average cost of borrowing throughout the month. It'll be the equivalent of one or 2%. It'll, be, it'll still be 7%, but it's gonna be on a balance that's so low that it's only going to be like you're paying 1% or 2%. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that is how dynamic banking, even with a higher interest line of credit, can work to pay off a lower interest debt. It's amazing. The numbers just work. Check out my dynamic banking videos and you can see uh, I put a lot of detail into those on how exactly it works. You can get a good idea of what's going to help you out. So... That is one way, like, if you want to use that time that we meet together to identify those things, if you can't, like, can't quite figure out what the best way to do it is, certainly sign up for a meeting. We can go over that. I hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and the whole life, check out these videos right over here, and we'll see you next time. Now, go maximize your cash flow.